Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, border conflict between nuclear powers China and India heats up. India adding 10,000 troops to guard their disputed border. I want competition with China, not conflict. State of the Union speech sparking an uproar across the country. How should we read his comments about China? We tap a national security analyst for more. A U.S. Army soldier facing federal charges for selling top-secret military information to China. More on what exactly he's been allegedly collecting. And a travel alert you can't ignore. Two U.S. lawmakers pushing a do-not-travel notice for the Xinjiang region. That's to protect Americans from unknowingly contributing to what they're calling atrocity crime. Tensions are soaring at the border between two nuclear powers. India reportedly planning to send 10,000 more troops to its disputed border with China. The goal is to safeguard the region as New Delhi accuses the Chinese Communist Party of not keeping its promises. Beijing responds. Senior Indian officials who declined to be named spoke to Bloomberg on Thursday, saying India has freed up 10,000 soldiers to strengthen its disputed border with China. They will join other 9,000 soldiers already deployed in that region, guarding more than 300 miles of border. India's defense minister said, quote, whether from land, air or sea, if anyone attacks India, our forces will respond firmly. China responded Friday, saying more Indian troops at the border won't ease tensions. The new total of roughly 20,000 Indian soldiers there, plus artillery and strong air support, appears to mark the second largest deployment from the Indian side for decades. In 2021, the Indian government moved 50,000 soldiers to its border with China. That's after a clash the year before killed 20 Indian soldiers. Beijing said four Chinese soldiers died. Several areas also saw an even stronger military buildup from the Chinese side, including a military civil dual-use airbase, artillery and anti-aircraft systems. The border talks haven't really improved the situation. While China often accused the Indian side of insisting on unreasonable demands, India said the tension was caused by unilateral attempts by the Chinese side to alter the status quo. The two countries share a more than 2,000-mile frontier border along the Himalayas. Much of it is not demarcated. Is President Biden underestimating the dangers from the Chinese Communist Party? Here's what he said about his China policy in the State of the Union address Thursday. I want competition with China, not conflict. And we're in a stronger position to win the conflict of the 21st century against China than anyone else for that matter, than any time as well. China owns the largest standing army in the world. That's about twice the size of the U.S. And it's still expanding the military and pouring even more money into it. Two days ago, China just announced it would increase its defense budget by 7.2 percent this year. That's over $230 billion. China is also seeking to dominate the satellite communication in space. It plans to send even more satellites into space this year than the U.S. and works to build its own Starlink-like network. The goal, 26,000 pieces. That's almost five times more than the current U.S. Starlink. Satellite communication plays a vital role in active conflict zones. It's also been proved to have aided the U.S. military to combat Russia. Back to military development, the U.S. hasn't successfully equipped hypersonic missiles to its fighter jets yet. China and Russia already have them ready in their arsenals. China has also been enhancing military ties with two neighbors and U.S. adversaries, Russia and North Korea. And as it endeavors to advance, China poses a major threat to U.S. intellectual property. I've made sure that the most advanced American technologies can't be used in China. The U.S. is still investigating reports accusing Chinese companies of helping Iran steal U.S. weapons technology. Just a month ago, Jim Mancuso, the head of a top unit at the Department of Homeland Security, exposed that the agency discovered sensitive materials in U.S. technologies in debris from Iranian weapons. From battlefields in Ukraine and the Middle East, these weapons are used by U.S. adversaries to attack American troops and their allies. 
To discuss more about Biden's remarks on China during the State of the Union address, we sat down with General Robert Spaulding, retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General and author of War Without Rules. General Spaulding, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thanks. Great to be back. Now, President Biden delivered the State of the Union last night, and he touched on foreign policy, specifically China. I want to play a clip now. And we're standing up against China's unfair economic practices. We're standing up for peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits. And we're in a stronger position to win the conflict of the 21st century against China than anyone else for that matter, than any time as well. What is your reaction to that? You know, um, President Biden, you know, and, and really kept going with a lot of the policies that President Trump uh, implemented uh, in, during his administration. So I actually applaud him for that. That being said, I think it's very clear that it's been very slow and it is it needs to be much more rapid and much more involved. They've shut down things like the Department of Justice going after people, you know, Chinese nationals who were spying on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. So they've slowed down numerous programs. They haven't done enough in things like fentanyl. So there's a lot more bad news uh, with regard, regard to the border, obviously, and kind of continuous bad news on fentanyl when it comes to Biden. But there is also bad news under Trump. And I think the reason is, is because the Chinese Communist Party has influenced our corporate sector, our financial sectors, and in turn, those sectors influence politics in Washington, D.C. Now, if we do see a second Trump term, how do you see Trump handling the China issue? <laughs> the Chinese Communist Party basically went all in on Biden in 2020. So I think I can see a Trump administration retaliating against the Chinese Communist Party for that. And I think here, the parties go after each other and you know the Chinese Communist Party benefits from that. So if you can get somebody that actually understands politics more so than combat, which is where we think national security should be right now, but it's really not. It's in global political warfare, which is what the Chinese Communist Party wages then I think we have a better chance, quite frankly, of dealing with the Chinese Communist Party. You know, because these things like TikTok are a big, big problem, and they are a weapon in that global political warfare campaign. Quite concerning indeed. General Spaulding, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. A U.S. Army soldier in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, now slapped with six federal charges, including conspiracy and bribery. A grand jury indicted him Thursday for allegedly stealing top-secret national defense information to someone from China. Prosecutors accuse intelligence analyst Corbine Schultz of a multi-year conspiracy designed to illegally exploit his access to classified information and trade it for cash. The indictment claims Schultz's conspirator tasked him with gathering information on U.S. plans to respond to a military attack on Taiwan, along with sensitive data and information on the F-22 stealth fighter jet, the Whiskey Combat Rescue Helicopter, the HIMARS rocket system, and intercontinental ballistic missiles. The indictment alleges Schultz took around $42,000 in 14 payments from a conspirator that claimed to live in Hong Kong. Prosecutors say Schultz started disclosing documents, maps, notes, photographs, and plans related to national defense in June of 2022. An agency inside Taiwan's government urged China not to change the status quo on Friday. The call comes amid escalating tensions sparked by Chinese Coast Guard vessels entering Taiwan-controlled waters. Our Coast Guard has never entered their waters. So under this former tacit understanding, I think we can continue to live together if they don't invade our waters. The Taiwanese agency handles the island's policy toward China. Beijing started regular Coast Guard patrols around Taiwan's Kinmen Islands last month after two Chinese fishermen died trying to flee inspection by Taiwan's Coast Guard. This week, the Chinese regime announced a 7.2 percent increase in defense spending, a military budget that has more than doubled from 2013. That's on top of officially hardening its stance on Taiwan, with the omission of the phrase peaceful reunification in the budget report. 
Roaring jets and booming explosions. 137 soldiers from the U.S., Thailand and South Korea wrapped up the largest annual military drill in Asia on Friday. For Washington, the Cobra Gold exercise is a key platform to shore up alliances in Asia, especially at a time of increasing aggression from the Chinese Communist regime. The Cobra Gold is one of the world's longest-running multilateral military exercises and the biggest in Southeast Asia. Two members of Congress, a Republican from Florida and a Democrat from New York, today unveiling the Americas Act. It's a bipartisan bill designed to counter the Chinese Communist Party's influence in the Americas and expand U.S. trade relations with partners in the Western Hemisphere. The two major events that occurred in the past decades is that America, our factories, went to China and the Chinese replaced the United States as the top business partner in Latin America. It is a multi-billion dollar tool for job creation in the Caribbean, Central America, and South America. It would also stem the root causes of migration by bringing jobs to our hemisphere. The America's Act has the support of Congressman Mike Gallagher, Chairman of the Select Committee on the CCP, and of Senators Bill Cassidy and Michael Bennett. The bill promises Latin American partners a pathway to join a free trade agreement with the U.S. It would also seek to close tariff loopholes that China currently exploits. A bipartisan push from the U.S. against genocide in the Xinjiang region, or East Turkestan as it's known to its native Uyghur population. Lawmakers are asking the State Department to issue a do-not-travel notice for the region. In a joint letter to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Congressman Chris Smith and Senator Jeff Merkley wrote, Tourism only serves to whitewash these atrocities, serving the interests of the Chinese Communist Party. Over one million Uyghurs, members of an ethnic minority in Xinjiang, have been subjected to mass detention, torture and forced labor. The U.S. government has labeled it a genocide. And the United Nations considers it a crime against humanity. The lawmakers also sent letters to three private travel companies providing trips in Xinjiang, including visits to mosques. The letters point out that these mosques are off-limits to Uyghurs seeking to practice their faith, but are being used for tourism. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform Epic TV where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Concerns about the ongoing southern border crisis are dominating political talks in the U.S., but what's pushing Chinese immigrants to leave their homeland? An English teacher shared her story with NTD. Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 mysteriously vanished 10 years ago Friday. Families say they're still holding out hope for answers. Democracy in Hong Kong facing a bleak future. Lawmakers unveiling a draft of a chilling new national security law, targeting pro-democracy activists with even tougher penalties. And Hollywood mocked the red scare of yesteryear. Now a new NTD documentary is exposing a story the film industry doesn't want you to see. We're on the premiere of Hollywood Takeover after the break here on China In Focus. Thanks for watching China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.